Hello and welcome to another beautiful day in Paris. Today is Sunday and I'm planning to go to the Musée de l'Orangerie, which is an art gallery and it's located right next to the Jardin de Tuileries along the Seine. And they have a room, a circular room, with Claude Monet's water lily painting in it. And it is the one that I'm most excited to see because I'm a big Claude Monet fan. He's one of my favourite painters. Um, a few years ago I went to his house and grounds in Giverny and saw the gardens that inspired his paintings and it was really a magical experience and I'm really excited to see his work that they have here in Paris. So let's go! All I can say is honestly, wow. All of my favorite painters, is, my favorite movement is probably the Impressionist movement and they had work by Monet, Renoir, Cezanne, and it was just amazing. I just, I got so many postcards of all of my favorite pieces and I was just walking around for hours um, trying to take in all of the details, it was beautiful. So now I'm probably gonna go back and get some lunch because I'm really hungry. <laughs>
just wanted to show you what um, I've been listening to on Spotify recently because I have it on as I was preparing my lunch and I just thought you might be interested. So um, you probably don't know, but um, when the first lockdown started, I thought, what should I do in my free time? Well, something I've always wanted to do but never had the time to do. So I started learning Italian um, and it was just on Duolingo, an app on my phone and, you know, slowly, slowly, it's not like I had classes or anything, but um, I find that learning languages is better if you really immerse yourself in the language. So I was looking at different Italian singers and I found this um, person, Levante. She's a Sicilian singer and I love her music. Since I started learning Italian, I just have her music on my phone on repeat. I love all of it. And another recommendation I have is this Italian podcast called Italiano con Amore with Eleonora Silanus um, and it's just really good. Um, she talks in Italian but at quite a good pace for beginners I believe. I understand everything she says and I haven't had any classes or anything. And she talks about the culture of Italy, um, for example, different parts of Italy, different sites and cities, saints, foods and celebrations, just really interesting things. So I love to listen to them and I have things like that on as I'm cooking or just around the house on my own because it's nice to have some sound on if you're alone. Um, I find it makes it easier to live alone. So yeah, those are my recommendations. So if anyone's thinking of learning Italian or is just interested in the culture of Italy, then I recommend checking them out. And while I'm on the subject of all things Italian, um, I just wanted to ask who's seen the Dolce & Gabbana Venezia Alta Moda show? It's on YouTube. It's basically, um, they filmed the runway, the show in Venice, um, and the Alta Moda is the high fashion, so it's, it's like the people are modelling art rather than clothing. It's incredible. And Dolce & Gabbana is one of the brands that I admire the most because their work is just beautiful. It's my dream to wear their clothes. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Um, honestly, their their dresses are so beautiful and I was watching it yesterday and um, the location itself is stunning. They're doing it in front of the Doji Palace and the models come in on gondolas and then walk up onto the catwalk. And the first dress in particular, it was just, it took my breath away. It was a big ball gown, like something that a Disney princess would wear, but it had pictures of Venice all over it and the colors, like the light blues and everything. And it was just so, so beautiful. Um, in the summer I went to Milan and after going there and seeing all the people, everyone there is so stylish so just um, people watching, sitting in a cafe and watching the people walking past is one of the best things and it really got me into fashion because um, I walked around the shops there and I don't know, just started to get an interest in fashion and yesterday I watched the Dolce Gabbana Venezia show and it was really good so I recommend if you haven't seen it yet go and watch it, it's on YouTube and it's really good, it's really interesting to watch and I would say yeah it's more of a cultural thing as well um, just their work is incredible and I love that everything they do is inspired by Italy so their previous collections have also had stuff inspired by Sicily because that's where they're from um, and I just love that about their work, it's just so fun and playful and bright colours and yeah if I was rich I'd probably choose them to buy clothes from so yeah I would recommend watching it if you haven't so and my impressions after visiting the Musée de l'Orangerie are just of amazement because I was just, I loved all of the paintings there. The Impressionist movement, like I said, is one of my favourites because I just love, I don't know, the, the feeling that it is painted, it's not just a photo and that it's got emotion in each brush stroke and the way that they capture the light and everything, it's just beautiful. Monet is one of my favourite painters. Um, I went to his house in Giverny a few years ago and I loved the gardens, it was just a dream. If I ever have, um, if I'm ever lucky enough to have big gardens, I would probably take inspiration from his. They are so stunning and I love his paintings. Ever since I was little, I used to get pictures of them up on my laptop and try to copy them. <laughs> so um, after I got a painting set for Christmas, I used to do that a lot. So he is a big inspiration for me. Um, and just sitting in the water lily room, there's two rooms that are oval shaped and all the way around there's his paintings of water lilies which he did specially for that museum and uh, I love the way that it's zoomed in into the pond so you can't see a horizon or a sky or the ground just the water and the water lilies and the trees and willow trees which are also my favourite trees so um, it was just beautiful and when I sat there just watching the painting looking at it from looking at the painting from the bench 
I was just trying to imagine in my mind Giverny and like the sound of the, the trees and the leaves on the water and just remembering how peaceful it was because that's what is the most magical thing about his gardens. When you're there you just feel so calm and the tranquility is undeniable. <laughs> so if you ever get the opportunity I would recommend visiting his house, it's just a really amazing experience and yeah when I was sitting in front of the painting it really transported it really transported me back to when I visited so it was just amazing and also I loved um, lots of the other paintings there it was a really good museum a good size as well because the Louvre is it's got amazing works but it's very overwhelming it took me a whole day and I didn't even see everything in there but the Musée de l'Orangerie is a more manageable size you're satisfied with taking the art but it's not tiring and it's a really good museum um, and I got a little book which sums up some of the um, the paintings that are displayed there and I thought I'd show you some of my favourites so one that I really loved is this one it's of peaches and I just love the background the texture and the layers and the colours it's just and I love peaches peaches in France are so sweet and actually um, at university one day recently our professor came in um, with a bag of peaches and plums for each student from trees from his gardens which I thought was so so sweet and they were the really good peaches um, and I just felt like in France they grow really good peaches so <laughs> it's another reason I like this painting because it just feels fitting <laughs> while I'm here and I also love these ones of girls playing piano um, I just thought they were really beautiful and I don't know, I guess it's the movement in these scenes because there aren't static people who are posing, it's the people actually playing and interacting with each other and because I play the piano maybe, I don't know, I just love those ones. I discovered the painter André Durand, who I'd never heard of before, and I loved these paintings of his niece. Um, I know I just said that I like the other ones because they were movement and they weren't static people posing. Um, and she is posing in these ones, but there's something about her facial expression that he captures so beautifully and I don't know, she just seems to be really looking into your soul and I just really loved the colours in these paintings, they were very calming and I liked them a lot. I also particularly liked the works of Utrillo. Um, here's one that he painted of Montmartre and I think the reason I liked it is, because it's not really the style I would normally like, but I just loved um, the fact that it was of an area I'd been walking around recently so it was interesting to see how he captured it and to see that I recognised buildings and um, so this painting's from 1924 and you know I still recognise them when I'm walking around today it's really lovely and I love the artist here because I love the fact that when you go to Montmartre there's loads of artists sitting and doing portraits and caricatures and I mean it's mainly for tourists but I just love that artsy and creative atmosphere there and so I like seeing that in this painting and let me see if I can find any Cezanne ones because I was also, I loved the works of Cezanne there. Um, yeah, here's a landscape by Cezanne that I saw and it was just so tranquil. It transports you to, um, I don't know, the south of France or something. It doesn't say where it is, but it, it's just the simplicity of the painting and the simple subject matter, the simple style it's just really makes you feel so tranquil um, and i also love his still lives these ones that were in the gallery just so i just love them <laughs> so yeah those are some of the things that stood out to me while i was there so i got this book because it's just nice to look through and because i love the museum so much i can look at my favorite pieces whenever i want I always love it when you go to an art gallery and there isn't a rope that makes you stand really far away from the paintings because I hate it when you go and then you're several metres away from the painting and you can't see it that well because if I wanted to see the painting I could just look at it on the internet nowadays we have access to everything online but if I go in real life it's because I want to see the details I want to see it up close and see the brush strokes and like the textures of it the 3D parts that you wouldn't see in a photo and just be able to study in detail how they made the painting and think about what they were thinking and trying to emulate as they painted it. So I like that in the Musée d'Orangerie you can get pretty close um, and really see the paintings in detail, so that was really good as well. 
And another book I got is the Claude Monet book because, like I said, Claude Monet is one of my favourite painters and this edition was just really lovely. It's got um, a wide range of his artwork and I just love it so, so much. It's just beautiful. These aren't necessarily ones from the Musée d'Orangerie and um, the ones there were, like I said, the big water lily ones. And because it's curved and all the way around the room, it just really... Um, takes you to that world that he was painting it. It's really effective and the first time I've seen something like that done I think. Um, but yeah, this is a really good one and um, these kind of books I love to have for example if you're kind of tired in the evening and you don't want to read something intensive just to flick through this and admire the paintings with a cup of tea or something is a great way to spend an evening. So yeah, those are the things that I got while I was there. And also some postcards because I love to collect postcards wherever I go for scrapbooking because I use them in my scrapbooking and that's another thing I do in my free time. So yeah, um, I really enjoyed it and if you're ever in Paris, definitely go to the Musée de l'Orangerie because it's a really good spot. It's a bit later now, um, I have a cup of tea. Um, I've made an almond and rose tea, um, which is something different and a bit special. It smells really good, it tastes so nice. Um, and I am probably going to do a bit of journaling, catch up on the weekend. Um, and what I did and then watch some YouTube so I hope you enjoyed my video and um, if you liked it then please subscribe to my channel for more videos of me um, exploring Paris and I will see you next time bye